Mykola Knizhitsky, the member of the Ukrainian parliament, is the guest of Spotlight Ukraine. Hello and welcome. Good day. So for more than one year, Ukraine has been actively discussing the need to ban the activities of the Ukrainian Church of the Moscow Patriarchate. But there has been no political will to do that. Why is it so, in your opinion? Of course, there are several reasons. First of all, Ukraine is a democratic nation, and of course, we have been trying our best in order to make for the state not to intrude into the affairs of church. Despite the fact that the Russian church was not a church, it was the affiliate of the FSB, and it was the ideological tool of Putin through which it was he was making his politics. Of course, there were many politicians who are dependent on this church. Right now, they are last of them because they left Ukrainian parliament when the war broke out and of course many criminal uh, cases were started and we also right now understand that there is no place for the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine. And uh, because there's good notion that the topic of religion is so delicate and Russia manipulates it a lot. So the fact that the security service of Ukraine uh, began churches in the temples of the Moscow Patriarchate, they themselves claimed as an attack on the church. And many people in the world insist on such rhetoric. How should we deal with this? And how should we explain that the Russian church in Ukraine is no longer a religious organization, but an anti-state political structure? It seems to me that, of course, it's understandable not only for Ukrainians, but also by our allies. Ukrainian parliament right now imposed sanctions on uh, Kirill Hordyayev, who is the head of this uh, church. And also the same sanctions have been imposed not only by Ukrainian parliaments, but by many uh, European parliaments as well, by the UK, uh, etc. If the head of the so-called church really encourages everyone to kill Ukrainians, and when the priests take weapons into their ha hands. It means that they are not an uh, ideological organization, but the department of the FSB. Everyone understand, and since we have war right now, they are fighting against us. It means that any activity of such a church, I mean Russian Orthodox Church, we need to ban it, as well as the activity of any other organization that are connected with this organization, this and that way. If any religious union is not connected with Russian Church, of course, it has the right to operate because Ukraine is a democratic state. As a response of this situation, the president of Ukraine instructs it to prepare a law on the impossibility of any activities of religious organizations that have centers of influence in Russia and gave the parliament two months to do so. But there is already such a bill. So why should we develop another one? I think that the influence of the Russian agents in Ukraine is pretty big even right now. And many of them, uh, they are in midst of those who are making decisions for the presidents. Even though the Ukrainian government, for the first time, uh, really tried to make it clear within the religious milieu and it really started to combat with those who are in uh, wearing the press uh, uh, clothes, but still they are pretty aggressive about Ukraine. It's really good that we have the first signs that Ukraine is trying to fight this phenomenon. But more effectively, it was to support the bill that is already registered in the parliament. It is being considered, and I believe that it will be supported, and we will not to wait uh, several months. It will be uh, settled in the nearest future. Thank you. And the, the last question. Not all priests of the Orthodox Church of the Moscow Par uh, Patriarchate, as we've seen in the previous video, are traitors and cooperate with the occupiers. So what should we do with the rest of them? If they prove that they have nothing to do with the Russian Orthodox Church, that they do not uh, follow to the comments of Putin, of course, they can be registered and operate in Ukraine as priests. Uh, no one will ban them from this. They have to be independent from Russia. Uh, a lot of them, they want to join a Ukrainian uh, Orthodox Church, the canonic Orthodox Church, with Thomas. 
And very often, many people in uh, the parliament, they block this union. Unfortunately, there were many people within the Ukrainian parliament who really uh, supported Russia or their representatives. And therefore, right now, uh, it's really a, ple a pleasure for me that the person in charge who is to stimulate such a negotiations of the union was uh, what uh, was replaced by the president. And of course, it will be a great support for the church and for the priests of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in their mission, again, uh, operating under Ukrainian legislation and having absolutely no connection with the uh, Russian church uh, with the sanctions. Thank you once again for your answers and for your expertise. Mikhail Knezhitsky is the member of the Ukrainian parliament, was the guest of Spotlight Ukraine, and now we continue. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends, and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share, and subscribe. Any questions, proposals, and comments, contact us via email.